I'm Gene Robinson. I'm director of the Carl Woese Institute for Genomic Biology at the University of Illinois. I'm also a professor of entomology and neuroscience. I study genes, brains, and behavior in the honeybee. And our discoveries in the honeybee uh, over the years have led to ideas that I think have the possibility to help us better understand human nature. So um, this work is a body of work over the last 15 or so years. We now see a lot of similar work uh, that has emerged from other animals. And so it seems like it's a very robust set of new understandings of how genes and the environment interact to shape brain and behavior. The main issue is to reframe nature nurture. So nature nurture has long been thought of as two separate forces, two separate influences, um, more technically known as genes and the environment. And what we showed about 15 years ago is that it's possible to see things entirely differently thanks to the new science of genomics. And so the new science of genomics has given us the tools to be able to study the activity of genes in real time. And using animal models, we can study this very intensively um, and expose animals to different uh, situations, different environments, different experiences, and then monitor how changes in gene activity occur and how they relate uh, to behavior. The big discovery is that the gene expression in the brain, the activity of genes in the brain, is very, very sensitive to environmental conditions, and in particular to social stimuli. This uh, really is changing, uh, has changed the way we understand um, the regulation of behavior. So what we now see is that there is a, a control system that's at the molecular level that involves changes in gene activity that are involved in orchestrating changes in behavior. And these changes in activity, gene activity, come from the environment. They're driven by the environment. What that means then is that we can reframe nature and nurture. It's not genes and the environment. It both uh, nature and nurture act on the genome just at different time scales. So a better way to see this is that there are long-term inherited changes and influences on the genome. This is what we call nature. And then short-term or more short-term environmental influences on the genome. This is what we call nurture. So these discoveries have been made in honeybees and in other animals. We now have layered on top of this understanding of being able to measure the changes in gene activity, we now have a new subsidiary science called epigenetics, which gives us insights into biological mechanisms that are involved in translating the environment into the language of the genome, this kind of intermediate stage, uh, very, some, some changes that, that go on that involve orchestrating and regulating the changes in, in gene activity. And this layer has really blossomed, this layer of analysis has really blossomed over the last couple of years, giving us really new impetus to ask, how can these findings, which I have called 15 years ago sociogenomics and developed the sociogenomics framework, how can the sociogenomics framework be deployed to better understand human nature? to better understand the relationship between um, inherited and environmental influences. How do we provide a structure, a framework that takes into account these new discoveries um, to, to give us uh, insights into, into human nature? And then from that fundamental perspective, um, there's a great interest that I have and, and others in taking these new insights into human nature um, and looking at what are the practical implications um, for understanding um, personality development and its implications for understanding outcomes in, in human society, for understanding economics, policy, and, and things of that nature. So sociogenomics uh, is built on two foundations. One foundation is the foundation that's given to us from sociobiology, and in particular, the idea that social behavior has a biology, which means that there are a set of mechanisms that regulate it, and that it has an evolutionary history. When you say something has a biology, that means it's 
got a mechanistic basis and an evolutionary basis. So social behavior has this evolutionary basis. The second foundation is from the science of genomics. The first major discovery in the science of genomics, very young science, it's like 30 years old, uh, is that basically all organisms are playing with the same deck of cards. That is, all organisms share a large number of genes. What this does is, get, and this was something that we had not anticipated, and it has really revolutionized all areas of biology, including the study of behavior. So we are now then able to work and, and look at genes that are deeply conserved, that have been involved in biological functions in diverse organisms, and understand how those functions are put together in new ways to create uh, new complex traits, like a brain, like an elaborate set of, of uh, social behaviors. And so knowing that, I, that, um, that we're all playing with the same deck of cards has given us strong analytical insights as well as uh, the tools to be able to understand and dissect uh, social behavior and its environmental influence um, uh, at the genomic level.